We are here at my absolute favorite plant in the whole yard, and that is the lily koi. Just a burst of tropical deliciousness, and we just wanted to share some tips about growing passion fruit, planting it, and taking care of it, and harvesting, and all that good stuff. So, finger, finger guns, guns are back. Finger ah! guns. <laughs> Give us a like if this video is useful. You can wait to the end to do that. But in the meantime, subscribe, hit that little bell to stay up to date with everything that's going on. And for all the latest gardening tips, what to plant, what to be doing, and all that good stuff. So let's dive. <laughs> so let's dive right into it. So passion fruit, it's a tropical plant. It's pretty forgiving. Uh, you can plant it almost just about any time, but like a lot of plants, you don't want to plant it when it's fruiting for us that is usually between about May and September. Uh, this one was planted in October of 2019. So we are coming up on four years and it has totally taken over this whole wall. It is up on the roof, it's everywhere. It's trying to climb on the lights. It's just out of control and we love it. We're here for it all and enjoying every bit of it. Keep in mind, that if you do plant it during the summer, you're not gonna have any fruit that first year. If it's trying to fruit, take those off. Let the plant focus on root growth, just building up its foundation. Ideally, just wait until the fall, the winter to plant it though. It's gonna go pretty dormant during the winter. Again, being a tropical fruit, it wants those hot, long days. Now you know when to plant it. What about where the heck do I even get passion fruit? If you've seen them at the store, they're the saddest little things ever. I'm sorry, but just come over here, send us a DM on Instagram, come over here and get some real passion fruit. Don't buy those ones at the store for five bucks, they're this big and don't have anything in them. These guys are loaded, and this plant we got from City Farmers here in San Diego. It is one of our favorite little nurseries to support, and this plant is thriving. We're expecting anywhere between 800 to 1,000 plus fruit this year. Last year it did about five or 600 and it is just a workhorse. But I wanna show you another passion fruit. We love them so much, we have two, but let's go over and check it out. All right, over here we have another variety. Our big one turns purple when they're ripe. These actually turn yellow. They have a very different taste, and you can see it's pretty loaded. This is the first year it's really come on strong. Last year we got maybe a couple dozen fruit, but this plant is actually a few years old. The reason why it was really slow to take off is for a few reasons. First of all, it was started from seed. This maybe wasn't the strongest seed ever. It was kind of just a luck one that we got from my dad. We don't know if that particular fruit was taken care of very well or if that was the strongest seed available because these things are loaded with seeds. They've got dozens of them in there. So to just kind of summarize, long story short, for us, we've had a lot more success getting something from a nursery that was still pretty small to start, is only about not even a foot or so, and, but it really was selected well. It was given a good start to its life, being in the right soil, being fertilized, being taken care of properly. And so with that in mind, we recommend getting from a nursery, but of course, have some fun, experiment, and try one from seed too. How about taking care of it? So we have ours, like just about everything else in the garden, on drip. So this gets a nice good watering every few days, and the length, the timing, you can figure that out. There's no exact science, but we like to give this a nice healthy drink every few days because again, it's a tropical plant. It wants lots of water, and especially this time of year where it has dozens of fruits and if you could feel how heavy some of these are, you want that. You want them to be loaded, nice and juicy, almost all the way up to the top. And so this plant right now, especially this time of year, demands a lot of water. With a plant this big, you can also guess it needs some nutrients. So we'll work in compost a couple times a year, but also we'll use fruit tree fertilizer on this bad boy to keep it happy and healthy again with just how much foliage and how much fruit this thing is doing, it needs a lot of resources to make this happen. So keep your plants healthy, keep them happy with regular watering and then fertilizing accordingly as well. So you got a passion fruit, it's getting watered, it's getting fertilized. What can you expect? Well, a lot. <laughs> this 
has just taken over this area. Passion fruit really wants to go up and then spread and make a canopy, but a lot of people use it as a fence. They use it as kind of a privacy screen. So that's what we started out with here, running this whole span of about 25 feet. Going up, we've given it wires to grab onto every couple feet all the way up to the top. And then up here, we've given it a full trellis support system with concrete wire mesh. So the plant doesn't have to span a big gap, but just a few inches at a time. But passion fruit can go all over. A lot of people like to grow them on chain link fences um, and using them kind of as a, a barrier there. But passion fruit will sprawl. It will grow out of control, really, if you let it. And so that leads us right into pruning. You want to keep this plant uh, pruned to the situation that makes sense for where you're growing it. Also, best time to prune, ideally after it's given off fruit, so that's gonna be in the late fall and winter, and giving it some shape as before it puts on new growth in the spring. So sometimes you have to prune a little bit as you go. You can see we prune this end here, let this fruit hang out. But these were coming down, getting in our faces, and so we've given them some terminal cuts, which we need to do right here as well. So it won't be getting in the way too much, but you can see just all of this fruit and what this plant wants to do. And so we've given it kind of like a bowl cut in this entrance area. It's not the prettiest thing. It looks so rad to see all this fruit hanging down and we just love it. So be sure to keep your plant under con some control, give it some guidance, and it will reward you with lots and lots of delicious fruit look at that we've got some turning purple right there the best thing is they're hard these fruit will drop a good eight feet down right onto the ground they're fine they're not gonna be damaged at all they can take it and it's just makes it easy to harvest you go around pick them up you don't have to do any guessing they'll turn purple they'll drop you enjoy them you can expect a lot of growth out of this plant this can grow anywhere between 15 20 or more feet a year this whole area up here was totally uncovered less than a year ago and it has taken over this whole zone so as the plant gets larger and larger it's going to grow faster almost exponentially it was kind of slow in its first couple years but it picks up steam every year so you can expect a lot of growth from your plants in the vein of keeping it under control and pruning don't prune all the way back you're not going to do a super hard prune like you might with let's say a stone fruit tree. You wanna prune no more than about a third at a time and making sure that you aren't cutting the plant all the way back, you're not shocking it, but just giving it kind of some control and some structure for where you want it to grow in the future. And of course, you wanna be doing that in, again, in the winter or the fall after all these fruits have come off, but not doing that during the fruiting time. That's gonna be sending way too many signals to the plant. So wait until it's given you everything it has to give. All these nice purple fruits have dropped and then give it your haircut after that. So one thing that's a little bit tricky about that is every year this puts out its first set of flowers right around May. And these fruit take about three months. They've been dropping over the last couple weeks and more and more every day. If you're in a climate like ours, we're in zone 10A specifically, your plant might even do a second round of fruiting. So again, in October, we tend to see another flowering. And then those fruits that set will take four or five months to ripen because of the short days. And so it's kind of tricky. You might have to pull off some of those flowers, pull off those fruit. And so that way you say, to your plant, hey, this is not the time for that. We need to prune you. We need to get you under control, but it's gonna be so worth it because come next April, May, and onward, you're gonna just explode with flowers and with fruit and with new growth. This variety, like I said, turns purple. Our other one turns yellow. And again, they fall right off the vine when they're ready. How cool is that? It's kind of like the Kajari slip melon where it tells you, hey, I'm ripe, I'm ready. And we just love these. We can eat three, four, five of them for dessert every night. Our whole household just plows through them because they're delicious. So let's talk about how you eat them. Normally, we like to take a knife around the top and then just spoon out the delicious juice inside. Sometimes we put that in smoothies, sometimes we put it on yogurt, or sometimes my favorite is put them in the fridge for a day or two 
or longer. They'll keep for weeks and then just have open them up for dessert and enjoy them. But let's look at this guy. Woo! So those are all those seeds that we're talking about. How many are in every fruit? They are just packed. If you've had fresh passion fruit, you know what I'm talking about. They are so sweet, so delicious. But some of them, it's like eating a warhead. They can be sour and so fun. Everyone's a little bit different. And the yellow variety that we have over there is much sweeter, kind of floral. And these are just so fun because they are like eating sour candy. Super sweet but can be pretty tart and so really fun to also make juice with. We'll make cheesecake or passion fruit bars, all sorts of fun treats and just enjoying these. That's good, really good one. Just some of the first fruits of the year that we have here. I actually wanna grab a couple. If you do have them on a trellis, be careful because some of them might get caught up in there on the ledges of your trellis. So that one, totally ready. This one, also both of these had dropped. They've been sitting out in the sun for who knows how long now, but they're tough fruits, they're fine. And we'll stick these in the fridge and enjoy them soon. We love this plant for so many reasons. It's evergreen, it is a shade structure, it grows so easily doesn't have really any pest issues, no disease issues. In fact, it attracts a butterfly called the Gulf Fritillary that only lays its eggs on this plant. And we've seen so many of those over the last couple of years. Just such a cool plant. And again, it's a slice of paradise that you can bring into your own home, into your own garden. One of the few things that you wanna keep an eye out for is if you do have fruit that are hanging out there on the vine in the middle of summer, we really only see this in a couple of the hottest weeks in August, maybe September, is sun scald. Now, that just looks ugly. It, it's all wrinkly and nasty. And that actually, we found, does affect the flavor quite a bit. It makes it really sour, almost bitter. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna make you sick or not. I'm not a doctor. That was my brother, he was the smart one. And really the only other thing is expect a lot of fruit. You, we'll be giving it away, we put it out on the street, we give it to all of our friends and family, and we still can't get rid of it all. We, like I said, we'll make desserts and have five of them for dessert every night. But one thing that we like to do is freeze them whole and then just cut it open and spoon it out. It's like a little icy treat. Or you can juice them. If you pulse it in the blender or your food processor, it separates the seeds. And that way you have the juice separate and it is so fun to, throw that into smoothies or to use it in baking recipes. Think of ways that you can preserve this because it is such a delicious flavor you're gonna wanna enjoy all year long. So I hope you go out there, try planting one, try buying one, find out what works for you, but either way, get some passion fruit in your life and you're gonna thank us for it. What are you doing? I'm praying to the passion fruit. Now that guy, he's purple. I see him, he's gonna drop. I come out here in the morning, you know, hanging out, enjoying the, the cool morning, and you hear him drop every now and again, and it is my life's dream to catch one right off the vine. So I'm gonna be here for a while. I'll see you guys in the next video.